Hey, Steve, how are you? I'm good, Jade. Thank you so much for chatting with me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, the film is the film is wonderful, and I really I I love Daima. Uh, <laughs> you love her, or you hate her, or you're afraid of her. <laughs> you know, there's so many things. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> to all of them, right? <laughs> all of the above. Um, right. I was wondering, what is it that drew you to the role? Um, well, when uh, Brian and Sung sent me the script, I, I looked at it and I thought, how many opportunities do I have to be offered a lead role to play a character that I can really sink my teeth into? You know, I played a lot of character roles in different films and one small lead uh, in another Sundance film. But, uh, you know, this was something I could wrap my brain around, sink my body in you know, bite into it. Um, and so, of course, I would just absolutely do the role. Yeah, it, it's a phenomenal character and, and multi-layered. Like you said, th there is this real opportunity to to dive into to dive into her role, her character. I was wondering, where is it that you think that that her power comes from? Because she's such a powerful character in the story. Her power comes from a drive to survive and protect family. And I think that's a human dynamic that is inherent in all of us. Uh, how we manifest that is in different ways. So for Daima, she comes over as an illegal immigrant. She goes through the same struggles. She goes through the same challenges. But the difference is that she assumes a position of leadership. And with that leadership, even though it's in the underbelly of this community, Chinatown, it could be any community, it could be a Polish community, it could be, you know, a Romanian, Russian, South American, South African community, this all underbellies exist in all of these communities. Um, and then this film, it's Chinatown. So um, she's assuming a leadership role that comes with responsibility. It's not just an operation where she makes money, which she does, but there's a responsibility for these humans that she actually brings over to this country with their goal of having a better life. So it's more than that. So that's what makes it complex because she rules with um, a brutal iron fist, but she also has a very soft heart because if she didn't, she wouldn't have the obligation of survival, her own survival, the community survival, and her son's survival, her family's survival. So how do you develop a character like that? How do you mold it without spinning into caricature, without spinning into stereotype? She's not a dragon lady. She's not, you know, she's not a, she's, she's much more, you know, complex than that. Um, and that was a challenge of creating her. Yeah, I, I can see that on, on so many levels. And one of the things I love that that she says at one point is there's a difference between fear and respect. Right. Um, I was wondering if you could speak to that about what that what that means to you and what that means to to uh, Daima. Well, respect is earned. And fear is a tool. So mm -hmm. I think that's a difference. Um, she rules with fear because no one else will do it. No one else will assume that role. And there are consequences to that. And the consequence, the positive one is that she gains respect. The negative one is that there are consequences to her decisions and her sacrifices. And they will be brutal, but it's also uh, the, the Darwin's theory of survival of the fittest. You know, what do you do to survive if you have a family that's camping at a, a campsite and, you know, a cobra comes you know, swirling in and, and, and into that campsite. Are you going to kill that cobra to survive, to protect your family? I think it's the base, you know, that's sort of the example, the closest example that I can use uh, and the decision she has to make for that. Yeah, uh, you know, with, it's funny that you say that because I know one of the, one of the, th the lines that recurs, one of the themes that recurs for the film is, is survival or you survive your way and I survive mine. In the end, it's all the same. Mm -hmm. um, but, but is it like, I mean, is the drive to survive? Like, do you think, 
that it all just comes out in the wash is are there i don't i don't think if i don't think it's it's all the same i think it's just redefined according to circumstance hmm. so you know um survival is yes it's it's a general concept it's the consequence of that survival so i think it's how you define it how what do you how do you define survival and what are the mechanisms and the acts that you have to commit to survive um that's where the difference is is the end the same no because you may not survive you know that is also a consequence so you have to make that decision and you know in this case you know daima has to make the decisions of you know who lives who dies uh and what is the reason for that it's not gratuitous you know it's not gratuitous brutality it's brutality with a necessity behind it that's interesting yeah yeah i see what you're saying yeah um the the film also seems to seems to be interested in talking about the idea of the american dream mm -hmm. um and i was wondering you know, I mean, this, these are, these are families who are, who are immigrant families. Um, is that dream a reality? And, and if not, why do we insist on clinging to it so much? Well, if you look at the rest of the world, America is a very, very lucky country to live in. We have opportunities that were, would never be given to, you know, uh, citizens of other countries. So it is uh, the American dream is freedom. The American dream is democracy. Is that changing today? Yes, it is. It's being redefined in itself, but it's still the concept for foreign countries that America provides you the opportunities you wouldn't have in your own country. And it doesn't have to be Chinese. It could be Polish. It could be Romanian. It could be Russian. It could be South American, South African. I mean, you know, it, it, it happens in all communities and it happens across the world. America is not, it's the recipient of illegal immigrants, but it's not the reason for illegal immigrants, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and it's those citizens that take the risk and, 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 you know, they know what the consequences of that is. They could live or die. And it really is a life or death situation for them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, with, with that having been said, I was just wondering, what, what do you think the concept of hope looks like in a world like this? It depends on who the leadership is. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I think it really, and with Daima, what's, what makes her a special character is that she takes responsibility for that leadership. She takes responsibility for the immigrants that come over. Because essentially, even though it seems on surface value that she's brutal, she's also helping them survive. Now, it may not be an acceptable means of survival that we would see, you know, as a democratic society. But she, you know, if there weren't a daima, these people probably would not be alive once they arrived, you know. And that's the humanism of the film that you don't usually see depicted in films like this, where, you know, it does spin into caricature or stereotype. You know, it doesn't have that. It has a humanistic quality to it. Well, and, and, and you know, we've already sort of mentioned this, but the idea of family yeah. is, is shifted around and played with with that as well. Um, I was wondering if, if you could talk about about that in, in, in terms with, with Daima, because you're right, she's, she is bringing in these, these illegal immigrants, but but she, her family is so much greater than, than her sons. Yeah, her family is her community. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the specialness about this film is that any, everyone can, you know, they can relate to family. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter culture, doesn't matter ethnicity. And because it's the community, the family grows. So how do you take that small vortex that we can relate to on an intimate level and expand it so that it's a global universal story? That's what makes this film special. It does that. It blows that whole concept of family to a global sense, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's true. 
Um, uh, Jay, just as we're starting to wrap up here, I, I was wondering, you know, for, from people that see the film, I was wondering, what is it that you hope they take away from it? I hope to evoke some sort of conversation, some sort of emotion. You walk out of the theater if you're angry, if you're sad, if you're crying for no reason. I will have done my job. And then that will start a conversation. You may not even know why you're reacting, but if you walk out of the theater and you talk about the film, you're starting a conversation and wetting an appetite and increasing the appetite to see more stories like this. That's what I want as a takeaway. Oh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And and I really do appreciate having the chance to speak with you. It's it really is a great thank film. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for interviewing. It's wonderful. I think, you know, the more people that see the film, the better. And the more work for me. So <laughs> which is great too. That's phenomenal. Yeah, no, it's great. It's always great. I've been very lucky, but I could I could I, I love work. You know, I love work. I love sinking my teeth into it, creating, you know, magic. It's all magic. You know, magic with a message. Yes, I love that. I love yeah. that. Um, thank you so much, Jade. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you. Thank us. you, Steve. It was nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. Yeah. All right. Happy Canada up there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.